Again, thanks everybody for coming tonight. Tonight's a little bit unique that I'm going to be talking a lot about my favorite subject, me. Um, so not really though, because it's it's about me and the combination with others, right? So again, for those of you that are new, we do this massive masters every Wednesday night where we present a topic. The goal is to add value to the community so people can learn about different things. We have all types of topics. They're all recorded and put on our YouTube channel. So if you're late or you miss anything or you want to go back, um, make sure that you do it. So a little bit about Massive Capital. We're a vertically integrated real estate company. We're a developer of triple net retail town centers, owner operator of value add multifamily. This is our property in San Antonio. And you can see, Mike, I got some fresh pictures finally for Horizon. Um, and so this one, we're having another webinar on Thursday, August 29th. Tonight, we're going to talk a little bit about my journey. So I started as a passive investor and I switched over to what's referred to as an active investor. And that's also called a syndicator. So again, a lot of people want to be able to do that. So I want to start with a little bit of my journey that I have made 20 passive investments. Eight of those investments have gone full cycle, but I have a variety from multifamily to retail to medical center to land development to new build storage. So I've done quite a bit of passive investing. And that's sort of for another topic about passive investing. But I always recommend people start their journey through passive investing. You get to learn a lot. You get to see what happens on a deal. Um, and then you get to follow it through. And of course, the goal on most of these deals are to double your money every five years. Um, so this is what we do. Then I switched over to being active. All right. So I'm going to talk just a little high level. These are the projects that I've been involved since the year and a half that I've been with Massive Capital. Uh, the, the, there's one more added on here, but we can't talk about it because it's still a 506B. But I'm a general partner, and I want to make sure that you understand the difference if you're new. So a passive investor is referred to as a limited partner. This is a person who puts money into a deal. They give it to the general partner or sponsor. And so what happens is the general partner finds a property, does all of the negotiations, does everything, secures bank financing, all of the different things that you need to operate it. Then they raise money from passive investors who are called the limited partners, and they combine this together and they will buy an asset. So for example, the Horizon apartment that I talked about earlier, this was a $16.9 million deal. And our investors actually own 70% of the property. So if you think about that, you could be an owner of a $17 million apartment complex. And what happens is you put your money into the deal. We combine that with the bank debt. We do all of the work. So you have no responsibilities, no risk. Your initial capital is your risk. And our goal is for us to grow that so that you can achieve financial freedom. And then what happens is how it does is on that particular deal, if you, if you remember, if I go back to it quickly here. Um, so what we do is we have what's called a 7% preferred return. What this means is investors will make 7% on their money. And until they do, us as partners don't make any money. Then when they achieve that, this particular opportunity is called the 70-30 split. So when we earn $1, 70 cents goes to the passive investors based on how much they've invested. And then 30 cents goes to us as sponsors, and that's how we get paid. And so again, with investor, investor first approach, we don't make anything till you at least make 7% of your money. Then after we do it, there's a 70, 30 split. So all of our interests are aligned. We don't make money till you make some money. And then we share proportionately on all of the money, but we take all of the risk we take all of the management, all of the responsibility and the bank loans. So again, that's a little bit of it. I did have three deals outside of Massive Capital, but what I wanna talk a little bit about is my journey. So when I first started as a passive investor, and I'm gonna be honest, other than getting some education and doing due diligence on your sponsor, the biggest requirement is that you have some capital to invest. But then when I switched to becoming an active partner, so I wanted to find deals. I'm going to tell you in 18 months, I toured 100 properties. 
I made 30 offers and I got nothing, nothing. I never got a deal done. I was just, I couldn't get it done. I wouldn't have enough partners. I didn't have enough liquidity. I didn't have all the things that I needed. I couldn't get it done. Then finally, I managed to get on a deal with a team. It was a nice deal to 240 doors in San Antonio. Problem was we couldn't close the deal. And instead of making money, I actually lost $75,000 of my hard money. I had to put money down at risk. And again, when you invest with massive capital, they take all of the risk. We're working on a deal. And if the deal doesn't happen, we lose those money. And this is what happens. And I'd raised that. I thought, oh, I'm going to raise capital. My goal was to raise $750,000, a little harder than I thought on my first deal. I raised $375,000, held it for about four and a half months, and then had to give it back to everybody. It was embarrassing. So then I got on another deal in Corpus Christi. Then the lending changed. I only got out of the 375, only 250 followed me. And again, we had to back out of the deal. The deal didn't happen. And the deal didn't happen, and I'm glad it didn't happen. But again, I want to make sure that people understand the amount of work that a sponsor does to find a deal. I know if you know anything about massive capital in the last two years, we've underwritten over 1,500 deals, made about 100 plus offers. And out of that, the way the cycle's gone, you can see we've closed on 15 deals. Now, some of those deals didn't go through the same offering system. But I want to make sure that, that you understand that the struggle is real to switch over to the active side. And why is it hard? You have so many hats to wear. Okay. And you're at this time, I was one person. I had a couple of people that I was trying to work on deals with. And you had to wear all of these hats. And it was super stressful trying to get all of these things. I was trying to do all of the different things. So if you're thinking about it, you want to become a syndicator. These are the things you have to think about. First of all, how do I find a deal? And then when I find a deal, how do I get the seller to even take me serious? How do I get an offer in that makes sense to anybody? What do I do? And so again, I told you I walked 100 properties. I made 30 offers. I had about 10 different groups of partners at the time that I was trying to do deals and we didn't get any deals done. And super frustrating, right? To spend that kind of time and energy. So then underwriting. Underwriting is super challenging. And I'm going to confess to everybody, I am not the world's greatest underwriter. So I kept trying to align myself with people that I can read it. I can analyze it. I know a lot about it. But me and XL agree that we're going to disagree. And I let people that are excellent at it do the underwriting. So again, having people on your team that can do that. It's mind boggling, right? Because you got to know so many things. Otherwise, if you make wrong projections, you're risking your investor's capital. You need to make sure that your underwriting is solid. So then all of a sudden you do get an LOI accepted. What in the world do you do now? Now all of a sudden you've got it accepted. So now all of a sudden you've got to get all your due diligence done. And due diligence is a lot of work. I know in the San Antonio property, a couple of folks on this call came and joined us and we walked 204 units in one day. It was 97 degrees and some of those units were a little disrepair and, and it's a lot of work. Then you had to get plumbers there, electricians there, roofers there, different types of contractors there. And you've got to get all of these things because again, if you miss one of these things and you make an incorrect decision, you are jeopardizing and risking your investor's capital. The head's exploding, right? On due diligence, what happens is there's a clock and a clock can be 15, 30 days, maybe a little extension, but you have to get everything done within the clock. And often, again, if you have hard money like I did at risk, if you can't get the deal done within time and you pass your exploration, your money goes what they call hard, which means you're at risk of losing it. So then I'm going to tell you a story. I didn't have a good CRM. My first deal I did, I cut and paste emails out of Excel, out of my Outlook, and I cut and paste the Word documents into emails. It took 
me seven hours to send out my first deal because I didn't have a customer management system. I didn't have a way to track it. And then I couldn't tell who answered. So I kept having to go back and go back. It was super stressful, super manual. And again, we've talked about it in other calls, but we have a really strong customer relation management system. And in fact, we use it as a team and we can put notes in and make calls. And we have VAs that make calls and set up appointments and we can track people. Because again, you have to track people. Do I have a relationship with them? I can offer them a 506B deal. Do I not have a relationship? So all of these things need to happen. And then you need to track their interest, right? Because you're on a deadline You've talked to these people, you're on a deadline and you need to get their investments in because you obviously you need to close. How many people here have raised capital and nobody's called you back? Nobody's called you back, right? Okay, so Brenda said, hey, Trevor, I'm interested. So I sent her everything. I had a phone call and I call her back and I say, Brenda, are you still interested in investing in the deal? And Brenda doesn't answer my phone call. She actually did, by the way, but I'm just using her as my guinea pig here. Why does she not want to take my call? She's embarrassed that she might not be able to do the deal. So it's kind of hard to do it. So again, having a team, what we do is we'll make a couple of calls and then we know, well, they also know Jasmine. Let me get Jasmine to call them or let me get Mike to call them or Sharar or Sanjay to call them. So we go through and we work as a team to be able to get people and again, one of the things I want to make sure I'm clear, and we're going to talk about actual capital raising next week, but I want to make sure you are not selling anybody anything when you're asking them to invest. You're actually offering them a way to reach financial freedom for their family. But it's super challenging to get them called because if you don't get the money in the bank, you can't close the deal. It's impossible to close the deal. I wish I had an experienced team. It's time to close. All of a sudden now we found out that the lender wants this. The insurance company wants that. The title company needs this. The property management company needs that. Everybody needs something, right? Closing is, sounds like it's going to be exciting, right? It sounds like, oh, we're just going to go there and everything's going to be fine. It's a lot of work. So again, if you don't have a team, if you don't have partners behind you that can help you with your closing, it's a super stressful time. Then you got a property. One of the things that a lot of people don't understand is everybody thinks the work is to get to closing. It's absolutely correct and incorrect. The real work starts after you close. And how many people here, again, have had some experience they hired a property manager. They thought the property manager would do everything. I know there's a lot of groups out there. They teach you, oh, just buy a property, hire a property management company, and then go on the beach and drink pina coladas and the check will roll in. I'm here to tell you that's not how it works. You have to make sure that you're managing the property because, again, you are 100% responsible for that operation. So even though you've already hired a property management company, at the end of the day, as the managers, as the general partners, as the asset managers, you are responsible for the operation of the property. If you don't achieve your business plan, you won't be able to achieve the profits and the things that you've made. So then again, I see I got a smile here, kind of look like an evil person on that smile. So again, after joining Massive Capital's mastermind, you can see we've closed on all of those deals. I've managed to raise about $6 million. And again, when I say that, a lot of my teammates are working on these things. So again, I've been able to be on nine deals with Massive Capital in 18 months. You remember what I told you before? In 18 months, what did I do? I walked 100 properties, I made 30 offers, and I got nothing. 18 months later, I joined a powerful team. I became part of their program. And in 18 months, I'm a general partner sponsor on nine syndications. That is, without a doubt, living proof that being part of a team makes all of the difference in the world. It absolutely does. 
So obviously with partners with massive capital, we have a six to nine, 12 month path to GP. You get assigned mentors, live deal access, access to reautomy, capital raising calls, underwriting calls, team capital raising support calls, document vault, templates, examples, live attendance included, working in, I'm talking fast here, lab environment, access to upcoming site visits, due diligence, property tours, clarify your path on what you want to do. So there's a little bit here again, coaching, mentoring changed my life. Um, super important. I want to talk a little bit about massive masters. Okay. And it's super important for you to understand all of the things, right? So you get deal flow and underwriting support. So you get live access to deals. We've underwritten about $3 billion worth of deals, access to upcoming site visits, due diligence and property tours. There is nothing more valuable to your personal experience to be able to be hands-on walking a property, part of making sure that it happens. You work with negotiating contracts. You participated in the LOIs and all your legal document preparation. You participate in our contract to close process. You can tell I'm Canadian when I say process, by the way. You clarify your path. You're going to be a capital raiser, deal finder, asset manager. Sometimes it's a mixture of the both. Okay, and so you have recordings of all previous, the documents, the multifamily capital raising book camps. We have a private WhatsApp chat. So the WhatsApp chat, it goes all day long. I have a joke that I have more WhatsApp channels than I actually have friends, and those are going. So we actually have a WhatsApp group for every capital raise when we start a deal. We have a WhatsApp chat for the general partners. And then after the capital raise, whoever's moved over to the general partner level, they get on that WhatsApp chat. We have weekly property management calls, monthly asset management calls, quarterly investor, well, monthly updates on written, and then quarterly investor calls. Again, our team is involved in everything. It's learning by doing. And then, of course, everybody doesn't want to believe it. But if you don't have money, you don't buy apartments, you don't buy anything. So you need to perfect capital raising and try to come next week. We've got a presentation on that, but capital raising, online training modules, tools, CRM, automation, integration of websites, you get all of these particular things on it. So again, this is kind of our 90 day roadmap. So these are all of the things that I've kind of talked on here. We have at least one most days two, a couple of days, three virtual calls for our mastermind for the folks to do in it. Then they go through all of here and they choose their path. And again, a lot of our partners are on multiple paths, um, but it, it's a lot that you can do. And so you can try to plan what you're going to do. Um, if you want a little more information, make sure you contact us. Um, and I've got some more, but I think what I'd like to do now is do some question and answer. And then if there's some time, I've got a little bit more about sharing about taking massive action.